Hello everyone, new tonight, explosive allegations against a Georgia Tech basketball coach. Thanks so much for joining us, I'm Sharon Reed. And I'm Brittany Miller, the women's coach fired for what the school called mental, emotional, and verbal abuse. Tonight, we've learned there's also an accusation of sexual harassment. Sports director Fred Khalil here with those exclusive details. Fred. Brittany, former star player Nisha Butler sent me a detailed statement through her attorney. And the new statement includes new accusations against coach Michelle Joseph. We're going out here today and we're going to be the toughest team on the floor for 40 minutes. The winningest coach in Georgia Tech women's basketball history, Michelle Joseph, guided her team to seven NCAA tournament appearances. Georgia Tech commissioned an independent investigation that found team members claimed the coach abused them mentally, emotionally, and verbally. It's nothing special. What it is, is hard ass work and that's what we do. But one former player claims further abuse. In a statement sent exclusively to CBS 46, Nisha Butler details a two-day road trip to North Carolina. Michelle Joseph was an assistant coach at Georgia Tech at the time. In a hotel room, Butler says Joseph, quote, touched me in a very inappropriate way on my outer thigh and my butt, end quote. The statement goes on to say, quote, after rebuffing her, she then informed me that my career was over, that I would never play basketball at Georgia Tech again, end quote. Butler abruptly left the team in 2002. In response to Butler's accusations, an attorney for Michelle Joseph sent this to CBS 46. My client, Michelle Joseph, categorically denies that anything like this ever happened. She stands by her statements in response to the confidential investigation report. And Joseph's representative also noted that Butler has been suspended from the Yellow Jackets for, from the team for academic reasons. And after the firing earlier this week, Joseph claimed Georgia Tech fired her as retaliation for speaking out about women's equality in sports. So Nisha Butler just arrived in studio. And Nisha, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this mm -hmm. sensitive subject. And the first question is, you know, why are you speaking out now? Well, honestly, when I um, read her statement that she said that um, through her lawyer that she's never and would never abuse a player, I know that that is absolutely false because she abused me. And I didn't want, I wanted to be here and stand by those girls because when it happened to me, I didn't have anybody. So I want those girls to, first of all, commend them for the courage to have to band together as a team um, and really speak their truth and also apologize to them because I was one of the first casualties and I didn't speak up and I really feel a sense of responsibility for some of the things that happened to them. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the culture, the climate? We've heard so much, the allegations against her, uh, abuse, emotional, uh, physical, uh, just a, a very nasty environment, but sexual abuse is something else. What was it like being one of her players? Well, I mean, honestly, it was, um, it was something that I took years to get over, right? I was, came out of New York City, um, and all I wanted to do was play point guard for Georgia Tech. You know, that was my dream. Um, when you look at my history, um, first year ACC All-American, the Naismith Player of the Year, I came back, I battled the injury. Yes, even my head coach at the time, Agnes Baranato, we're friends right now. I was just, you know, a guest coach on her bench. So I understand coaches when they have to be firm and get the play. I understand that. But there is a line between abuse and not being with the 11, nine girls said they can't trust a player. You, it's a privilege to coach these girls. When you can't trust your coach, your parents are leaving you, that's a problem. So I know from my um, experience with Georgia, T well, with Michelle Joseph, it was something that was terrible. It was my dream. I left, I literally, the last, when I rebuffed her, and the next game after that, she put me in, I remember this like it was yesterday. She put me in with a minute to go, and all my life, that has never happened to me. And I took my stuff and I left because I realized that she did have the power. And it's a woman too, right? Like that's, that's completely different. What am I supposed to do? You can't hit your coach. You can't use my word against her. What, what can you do? But now I'm a woman, I'm mature, and I'm able to speak my truth, and I'm able to corroborate those young ladies so they know they are not alone. And you were also saying that this is your first time talking about this publicly, so right. of course we commend you for your bravery. Thank you. What would you say to those other women that have, may have gone through what you said you went through? Right. Well, first of all, you know, I love basketball. Basketball is my heart, you know, um, and, I, and I still love it, but there were years that went by that I didn't. Mm -hmm. So I feel for an athlete, that's our pulse, you know, so I want to tell them that, you know, you will love it again, you know, first off. Um, but second of all, I'm mature now and I've grown, and I have to say this as a person, like everybody has their story, right? So it's not some sob story because I am strong and I'm powerful in where I stand right now because of every situation, including that one. 
So I want them to know that this is just a bump in the road, and everybody has it a bump in the road, but you really have to persevere through it, and then when it's your time, you speak up. I don't believe in just staying quiet for bullies, and that's why I'm here. You know, what I want to know, too, is I mean, what was that like? I mean, that night had to be crazy. I mean, I can't believe, number one, I mean, I guess because I just can't believe something like that would happen, but when you're going through that, I mean, what is going through your mind? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's interesting that you said that, like, I guess when you say something like that can happen, Typically, we talk about men sexually abusing women, um, but in, uh, I can't say just women's basketball, you know, um, in, in workplaces or anything like that. Women, if they have the power, which is great, like we want women in the workforce and everything like sure. that, but um, it does happen. And I believe it, you know, I didn't talk about it because a little bit, it's, it's awkward. I think we're prepared to deal with men, right? Yeah. Like we know what to do, I know to call for that, you know, my dad, my uncles, whoever. But a woman, it's, it's devastating. You know, it, it's what do you what do you do technically? I mean, it, it, it's, it's a devastating thing. But um, we talked a little bit offline um, and you mentioned the death of your mother being a catalyst. But right. I want to know for a time, did she rob you of basketball? You were a superstar in New York. Yeah. Stefan Marbury yeah. recruited you, said come mm -hmm. to Georgia Tech. You yeah. said it was your dream. You took your stuff and you left. Did she rob yeah. you of basketball? Of course she did. Of course she did. And I'm here today because I feel Unequivocally, that woman should never coach, never, I, I mean, seriously, be around young girls, but kids again, because, I mean, how diabolical is that? You know, I was a kid. I mean, honestly, I don't care how grown sure. these kids are talking about, but they're kids. Like, to, to take something that, you know, me having those awards, that's not for ego. That, that was hard work in the gym. That was an ACL injury. That was a broken leg. That was broken, you know, that was broken bones. So when you said, how do I feel about that? Yes, I'm, I'm fine now. I'm successful now. I'm very happy of where I am in life right now. But as a kid, to take away what you were playing with, the, the bonding between your parents. Mm -hmm. Like, my, when you mentioned my mom passed away, she was in Atlanta. You know how many years I couldn't step foot in Atlanta? And now my mom passed away young, but she robbed me of those years too. And that's more important, right? Like I moved to California as far away <laughs> as I possibly can. The, I, can't, I can't get back those years, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, like it, it, it's not something that just basketball. It's my life. Like coaches have a responsibility to teach kids, okay? Like of course it's a million dollar industry, I understand that, but they're coaches. You, you, you know what I mean? That's a responsibility that well, she, didn't, she didn't do well with. As a parent, you always trust the coach. Right, right. I mean, you know, when you, when you get recruited, you trust the coach to send your child to right. that school. Exactly. That's the, the trust is exactly. what is really what more than anything. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, and I commend Georgia Tech right now and the athletic director, Tom Sandberg, for taking a stand and protecting his student athletes. Who are like you them. hearing from, um, you know, how many others are there mm -hmm. like you, mm -hmm. do you think? Mm -hmm. And who are you hearing from? You're talking to the players, you're talking to ex-players mm -hmm. who are sharing perhaps something difficult? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, honestly, again, I've stayed away from Georgia Tech. Like, I've literally been to Georgia Tech to the tech part. Like, Georgia Tech is a great, booming entrepreneurship hub. That's where I'm, but as far as athletic association, I haven't. But you have to understand, I know I had to speak out because I'm in a separate, I'm, I'm not trying to coach. <laughs> I'm not trying to play anymore. And I understand, I have talked to friends of mine who are playing and you read in the statement like these girls have had to fake it. Some of the, her ex-players are having to fake it just so that they can keep going because she does know people. I mean, truth be told, she is a good X and O's coach, right? Like nothing to take away from her. So of course she has, um, she's played herself. So she has inroads. So, I mean, I'm here because I'm, I'm removed from that. But I have spoken to ex-teammates and they are afraid. I'm not clearly, but they are afraid to speak out because it's something that, you know, a woman has been put in power which another thing that to, to cry the gender inequity thing was really deeply She offensive. says that, that this is retaliation, <laughs> right, that she's all about equality, and that Georgia Tech right. is, is going against her for that reason right. because she spoke up. That's absolutely absurd. Yeah. That's absolutely absurd. You know, I mean, in, in a sense that, I mean, as far as a university, I've had a great relationship with Georgia Tech. I mean, it's Georgia Tech. I went back as a grown adult to graduate from Georgia Tech because I'm a proud alumni of Georgia Tech. But the women, right? Yeah. You got the shirt on. There yeah. we go, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, um, but, you know, there's, there's just, just a responsibility. And again, going back to, I understand. I mean, if people speak up, they know, I know what they say. But I also know, like, Nisha, I, I got to work. I got a job. And I understand that coaching is, you know, that, that, uh, fraternity. Yeah, that turnaround yeah. rate is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. And fine, I speak for you guys. Mm. <laughs> you know, and, and that's, that's okay because these young ladies, they banded together. And I'm proud of them. And they stuck to their guns and they told their truth. And I'm here to know that you guys are not crazy. 
you're telling the truth and that's real. So how much is wow. going on uh, behind the scenes? And I don't know how much you want to speak to it, right. but there's some indication that you've gotten that she's perhaps actively working against you and yeah. your outspokenness tonight. Oh, listen, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. So she said that I, I think she mentioned I was. I, um, first of all, my uh, academic advisor at the time, I have never been academically eligible. Yeah. Uh, was I on a roll student? Actually, I was in one semester. But according to NCAA and including Georgia Tech standards, Nisha Butler has never been academically eligible. Period. End of stop. Right, full stop. Um, but I understand that. But again, the difference between me and these young ladies is that I'm a grown woman. So if she wants to come after me, that's fine. But I do believe that this is a story, and I encourage people to investigate her past. I encourage people to investigate her, um, I think, firing or hiring at Purdue, where um, she had um, several NCAA violations. I encourage people to um, talk about her assistant coaches that have left abruptly and talk, dig into that a little bit of what has happened there. I hear stuff. And my thing is, you can dig into me. I'm a uh, little brother, big sister. I have graduated college. I'm on my way to grad school. And the people at Georgia Tech now who have come forward with me, they understand that I've grown up. I'm mature. So if she would like to go into people's house, I welcome that. Okay. Nisha Butler, we appreciate it so much. Yeah. The Thanks exclusive tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Really, yeah. really. Yeah. And for thanks sure. for facilitating this, Fred. Yes. Uh, cool. You're not so, going to yeah. stop speaking out. We do have to mention yes. Coach says none of this is true. Mm -hmm. Your allegations, uh, the reason she was fired mm -hmm. from Georgia Tech. Um, she says none of this is true. Mm -hmm. so we I corroborate with those, those young ladies. I, I hear you guys. I'm supporting you guys. And you're not crazy. She is definitely an abusive coach. Butler, we appreciate you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. telling your story. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get free push alerts.